Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? It's awesome. We'll begin our worship today with the use of hymn 382, O Day of Rest and Gladness. I think we'll do it, um, hymn, hymn 383, O Day of Rest and Gladness. But before we begin, I invite you to stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for bringing us here another Sabbath into your courts for worship. As we lift our voices to you and we continue in worship today, we ask that you come divinely near to us and guide us as we worship you. At least we worship you in spirit and in truth, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go. Oh, day of rest and madness. Oh, day of joy and light. Oh, balm of care and sadness. Most beautiful, most bright. On thee, the high and lonely. Sabbath to all our Sabbath school members present here on this beautiful Sabbath day. It is indeed a high privilege granted to us to be in fellowship with God this morning. And what do we say? To our fellow believers online, we appreciate your company and pray that as we worship together, we will receive the abundant blessings God has in store for us when we are connected with him. Welcome one, welcome all to our worship Sabbath, worship service. Our Sabbath school lesson for this week implore us to wait on the Lord. To wait means to endure, to expect, to long for, to trust, to have patience, to rest in the Lord, find peace, and to hope for. Hope is the fire 
that burns inside of us, igniting the desire to grasp the power of God's promises. And this flame is fed by the daily reading and meditating upon the scriptures. Daily reading and meditating upon the scriptures, keeping a song in our hearts and taking, talking to God in prayer. Let us keep our eyes turned toward heaven as we wait, as we await the second coming of Jesus with all our hope built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. At this time, we are going to sing from our hearts hymn number 522. My hope is built on nothing less. Stand at the appropriate time. After the singing of the hymn, Elder Vina Gray will do the scripture reading, followed by Sister Maxine Wright with a prayer. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from Psalm 27, and I will read in your hearing verses 7 through 14. You can follow in your Bibles, please. Psalm 27, verses 7 through 14. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, 
Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not unto, over unto the will of my enemies, for the false witness are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I have fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Here ends the reading of a portion of God's holy word. Let us pray. Let us bow our heads. Hoover over me, Holy Spirit. Stem my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hollow spirit. Come, O oh come, and fill me now. Mighty God, creator of the universe, we come before you on your holy day a memorial day, Lord, that you ask us to do always in remembrance of you. Lord, we humbly bow our heads and our hearts before you and we confess our sins. Lord, we pray, Holy Father, that you'll incline your ears to us and you'll forgive us. Lord, we are dust, but we come before you because you have sent your only begotten Son to die for dust. You love us so much, Lord. There is nothing that you would withhold from saving us. Lord, I pray that today you'll bless us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you'll change our stony hearts to hearts of flesh and you'll write your commandments in it one more time. Lord, we pray, Holy Father, that you'll order our steps in your word. And Lord, as we sit, we remember that our thoughts should be lifted above. Angels are around you, bowing their heads, covering their feet, calling, holy, holy, holy. Lord, we here are saying, holy art thou, O God. Hallelujah to the creator of the universe. Lord, we pray that you'll open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing today, Lord, that will take us forever and ever. Lord, we ask thou, great physician, that even now you'll touch us from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you'll recreate us spiritually so we will be righteous to fit in your righteous kingdom when you shall put in your appearance. Lord, whatsoever I fail to ask of this waiting congregation, fail not to grant it unto them, thou all-wise God. Lord, we acknowledge your sovereignty and we ask, Holy Father, that you will see us as the apple of your eye. Bless us now, we pray, in your holy name. Amen. We are about to do the, our lesson review, but before we're going to ask the care coordinators just to get in, be with the units and mark the blanks and prepare for the lesson review, which will be done by Elder Graham. So care coordinators.
Okay, thank you so much. Happy Sabbath, everybody. All right, uh, may I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for another sitting in your homes. We pray that as we review this lesson, that the high points will be brought out and we will examine ourselves against what we have studied, that we might become more and more like you. Bless us now, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. All right, we have come to the end of the first quarter. And how quickly it slipped away. We have been feasting in the book of Psalms. And I am sure that there, as we went through it, we have come across a lot of things that speaks to our individual lives. And as Micah 6 verse 8 says, He had shown thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? But to walk humbly, rather to do justly, and to show mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Um, I think the entire quarter is summed up with this text. All along we have been shown what God requires of us, how to treat each other and all of that, how we are to praise him, how we are to behave in the house of God. And so uh, asking the question, since we begun this quarter, as we measure ourselves against what we have studied, where are we? Have we grown? Or are we the same place? Or have we diminished? I ask the question so you can examine yourself as I do my own life. All right. The topic for the last lesson is... What's the topic for today's lesson? For this week's lesson? Wait on whom? Wait on the Lord. There are times when we wait on people. I know this man went and he proposed to this lady and she said, I have to go through school. I have to finish my education. And he said, I'll wait. Are we patiently waiting on the Lord? And what does wait mean? What do we understand by waiting on the Lord? Is it a state of idleness? You're not talking to me. So whilst we're waiting, do we just sit there and do nothing? Or we wait in, in patience? And whilst we are waiting, we ought to be laboring. Right? Occupy till I come. Wait patiently on the Lord. Do something, not in idleness. We should be ever striving to become more and more like Jesus. All right? And the memory text says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, one commentator says that when you look at Psalm 27, first part of it talks about rejoicing and all of that. And then suddenly he switched on. He said, look, with all of that, be patient. Wait on the Lord to bring things out for you. Don't run ahead of God. Just wait patiently on him to finish his work in you and not running ahead of him. We have reached the last lesson in this quarter study of the psalm the spiritual journey has taken us through experience of all before the majestic creator king and judge through the joys and divine deliverance forgiveness and salvation waiting on the lord is not an idle desperate 
bidding of one's time. Instead, waiting on the Lord is an act full of trust and faith, a trust and faith revealed in action. Wait on the Lord transformed our gloomy evenings with the expectancy of the bright morning. And what morning is this talking about? What morning? The getting up morning. Uh, when are you prepared for the getting up morning? No. Because if we, if our number, if my number should be called, the question is, am I ready? Then the next question is, Am I prepared to meet Jesus? So my getting up morning can be no. I might not rise now, but all I die will tell what resurrection I'll be in. All right? Um, question? Mm -hmm. In our day, we also are waiting for the second coming of Christ, but he has already come the first time and has given us a command. So we are waiting and we are working and we are also preparing for a righteous kingdom. Thy scepter, O God, a scepter of righteousness is thy kingdom. So now we are not only winning souls, but we have to ensure that we ourselves are not being a castaway while we are waiting and while we are working. Amen. Uh, I like how Paul puts it. He says, I bring myself under subjection. Lest when I preach into the kingdom, I be a castaway. So whilst he and Paul was looking for Jesus to come, uh, a lot of the apostles, or all of the apostles, as far as I understand, was looking for Jesus to come in their day, right? But Jesus did not come. Well, how is it with us whilst we are waiting? Are we really preparing ourselves or we are more concerned about the things of this life? I'm going to uh, run on because I have just about a little bit of time left. Hall of waiting. To wait means to persist. To persevere. And Paul in 3.14 says, whilst he's waiting, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. So whilst he's waiting, he's not content with just being a member of the Sanhedrin council or a member of the church. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God. And, and the psalmist says in Psalm 27, and verse 4, one thing I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. And what? And inquire in his temple. So whilst he was there waiting, or what he's suggesting is whilst we are waiting, we must have an earnest desire to become like Jesus Christ. It is one thing to be a member of the church. It's quite another thing to be a member of God's eternal kingdom. So whilst in waiting, we are called to do something. Wait on the Lord is more than just hanging on. It is a deep longing for God that is compared to intense thirst in a dry land, as Psalm 63 verse 1 tells us. The psalmist waits on many blessings from God, but is yearning to be brought in close, rather brought close to God, surpasses any other desire and need in this life. All right. Um, we wait, but we know not, sorry, 
We wait, but we know that it is not in vain. Christ's death and resurrection at the first coming is our surety of the second coming. I want to share something with you from Ellen White. He says, wait on the Lord. He said, let the bright beams from the face of Jesus shine in us whilst we are waiting. Let your neighbor see Christ in you whilst you're waiting. Let your husband and your wife see Christ in you whilst you're waiting. Let the beams of the sunshine of righteousness shine in and through us that our neighbors or those with whom we come in contact will see that we are really expecting Jesus Christ to come. It is not just coming to church and singing on the choir or taking part in, in, in church activities. It is living a life that testifies of Jesus Christ and is soon coming. All right. Um, we may bring him, Jesus Christ, our little cares and our big cares. But in all of that, we must show that we are expecting Jesus to come. And Jesus might come for me this evening. Uh, are we still together? Jesus might come for you tomorrow. But the question is, whilst I am waiting, am I prepared to meet him? Yes? Yes. As according to... Mark chapter 16, some way down in the verses, where it speak about when Jesus told his disciples that when he go up back to heaven, he will send the comforter to them. So they were there anticipating for the comforter to come. They not only just wait, but they were also praying, praying for the comforter until eventually According to Acts chapter 60, chapter 2, the comforter was there upon them, and they spake than ever before. All right. Um, I'd just like to look back at that, um, what you have quoted. Before the comforter came, it says that they confessed their faults. The Holy Spirit is not going to come until we renounce sin. And the person you wrong, you make it right. Uh, are, are we together? We want, uh, somebody said, we pray for the Holy Spirit to come. But can the Holy Spirit come when I am not ready for him? No. So we must be in the place of readiness. We must be prepared. Our vessels must be clean and turn up so that the Holy Spirit will come into our, our lives. All right, we go on to the next phase of the lesson, peace of a weaned child. In Psalm 131, it talks about the child being weaned. But what do you understand? All right, whilst you're thinking, I'll go on. It is, to me, it is suggesting that the child can't live on the breast all along. Amen? So it is speaking to being, what? In the state of growth. The child is weaned, but still dependent. Are you with me? The child is weaned, no longer on the breast, but is still dependent on his or her mother or parent. And Paul is saying, I think Paul says that we must grow, no, Peter, we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is saying that there must be a time when we can stop sucking breast and take hard food. Are we together? This is what I'm getting from it. So we are weaned from the breast, from the milk bottle. But we are not independent of God. 
We are dependent on him. So each day we must dig into his word that we might grow and bring forth fruit for his kingdom. All right? A refreshed conviction that, he's, that he is a child of God. Well, let me read, start a little farther up so we get the gist of the whole thing. God's people live in a world that afflicts the faithful. A world full of temptations and hardship for almost everybody. Almost everybody or for everybody? Everybody. A refreshed conviction that he is a called child of God and dependent on God for his life consoles the the psalmist, and brings him a, to confess that his pride has no value. And sometimes we take pride in how long we are in, in church, how much office we have held and still hold, how much of the Bible we know and can read off just so. But what we ought to be looking at is how much of God I have or how much of me God has. All right, let me run on. The child trust. Sorry, let me back up a little bit. Through weaning us, from insubstantial ambition and prayer, God introduces us to the nourishment of solid food, which is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John 3, 34. And Hebrew 5, Hebrews 5, 12 and 14. The childlike trust depicts or depicted in Psalm 131 is material. Faith that has been tried and tested by the hardship of life and has found God to be faithful and true to his word. It is easy to trust God when things are going right. Well, you're not talking to me. It is easy to trust God. It is easy to have faith. When things are smooth, when the ship is sailing and there's no storm that is threatening or no high wave bouncing on, on the ship. But when the storm hits, it's quite another thing. When the storm of life comes to you or came to you, how did you face it? When your husband said the wrong thing or your wife did the wrong thing. How did you behave? This is all what is here, you know. A child being weaned, it is speaking to maturity in Christ. Growing up to become more and more like Christ. And the question that comes is, can Jesus count on you? Can Jesus count on me? Am I willing to be weaned from being fed every day and never being able to share what I have gleaned? There must be some, some growth. Our witness about Christ can even be within the church itself where many need to know him for themselves. So we need to witness where? In church as well. Is it in, in the service here? All of us are good Christians right here now. Amen? All of us are good Christians as we are sitting here. But when the service finish and we get outside or we get around the back to get a cup of soup are we mature 
I, I want us brothers and sisters, what we have studied is history, you know. Unless we bring this home to our everyday life, it means nothing. So whilst we are waiting, we must demonstrate the power of God's sanctifying power. Right? Um, and the next part talks about bringing in the sheaves. What sheaves are you bringing in? Are you working on bringing in your sheaves? I don't know who they are, but whom God has placed within your care or within your reach. Are you reaching them for Christ? And the Sabbath day rest. We are called. He said, moreover, I gave them my Sabbath that they might know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify them. So what truth or what two aspects of the Sabbath day are highlighted in this song of the Sabbath day rest? What do you see? Well, you're not talking with me, so I'll go on. Yes? Um, brother teacher, witnessing now the condition that the church is in right now, and I am not saying any other church but Mandible Church. Mandible Church needs do not need right now a witnessing on the outside. Mandible Church needs a complete witnessing to show us where we are. For if we continue on the ground on which we are traveling now, I don't know how heaven will be if we will really reach there. It gone out of hand now. All right. It says that there must be a revival. But let it start with me. I would ask us brothers and sisters, and I'm told that my time is done. But let me just say this as we close. Let us stop looking at neighbor or the person sitting next to you, your husband, your wife. Are your children. Let us start with me. Let us examine ourselves in the light of heaven as we wait. And there is one passage of scripture which has become one of my favorite passage of scripture. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me then I shall be upright and I shall be innocent of the great transgression. And then it goes on to the last verse that we repeat over and over and over again. Let the words of my mouth, the only time that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our mind is going to be acceptable to God is when we put the 13th verse into it. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. May God help us brothers and sisters. And I, I'm closing. My time is done. Uh, no, no disrespect. Can I take one? No, I was told that my time is done. Amen. Show thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? That's what we've been studying about. All of the lesson is speaking to us being what Christ would have us to be. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful city. Thank you, Elder Graham. We have reached the last quarter week in this quarter's study of the Psalms. What a spiritual journey it has been. Do you agree? It was an experience that we have as we live in hope and await the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, Sister Brown will close off Sabbath school. As we all know, it's 13th Sabbath, and we always look forward to hearing our children on this 13th Sabbath day. 
I now invite Sister West to come forward with her dear children to present the program. Let us sit back and whisper a prayer for our leader and the children who will participate this morning. So this morning, we will have our beginners and our kindergarten who is going to be presenting our lesson, God is Love, and we're talking about baby Isaac. And so they're going to be doing a little finger play followed by a song. After two, one, two. Abraham and Sarah were very, very old. But God is my baby called. This makes Sarah laugh. <laughs> 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 and Abraham laughed too. <laughs> God sent baby Isaac. So God, God sent Ab Isaac. Isaac. God's words are true. So we're going to be singing now. I am a promise. After two, one, two. I am a promise. I am a promise. I am a promise. We sing capital B. I am a big, big bundle of patriarchs. So we will now have the primary class who will be doing their memory Happy Sabbath, everyone. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 20, Genesis 1 verse 27, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Psalms 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Exodus 3, verse 5. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Morning. 
morning and Abby Sabbath. <laughs> Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Psalms 103, verse 2. The angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Psalms 34, verse 7. Good morning, everyone. Here and now, I give half of my position to the poor. Luke 19, verse 8. Our mission story by Sister Adriana Codner, Michael Mitchell. Good morning, everyone. When Amiria turned six, father began to look for a good school for his daughter in India. He didn't want Amiria to, just, to go to just any school. He wanted the little girl to go to the best school. But where could he find such a school for her to start first grade? The question bothered father as he ate breakfast. The question bothered father as he went to work. The question bothered father as he got his hair cut afterward. What is a good daughter where I can what is a good school where I can send my daughter, he asked the barber. Send her to the Seventh-day Adventist school, the barber said. It's a good school. Father had never heard of a Seventh-day Adventist, heard of Seventh-day Adventists. He was not a Christian. He had been raised in another world religion, but he was impressed with the recommendation the barber had made of the Adventist school. He sent Amira to study at the Adventist school. Amira loved the school. She came home after school every day talking about Jesus. She sang joyful Christian songs that she had learned. She told father about the stories that she had heard from the Bible. She showed father how she was learning to pray. Father liked to hear about what Amira was learning at school. But what amazed him most was Amira's smiles. He had never seen her so happy. Before she had started to go to school, she had always looked sad. But now she was smiling as brightly as the sun. Father was delighted that his little girl was so happy. He wished that he could be as happy as her. But he couldn't because he didn't feel well. His stomach often hurt and the pain made him feel very sad. Amira noticed that father wasn't smiling like her. She wanted him to be happy. Even though she was only six, she had an idea. Come to the school, she said. Someone will pray for you. So the next time father took Amira to school, he followed her inside. Would someone pray for him? Near Amira's classroom, father saw the school accountant. The accountant helped count the school money. Would you pray for me, father asked. The accountant gladly prayed for father. He asked God to give the father good health and happiness. After the prayer, the accountant told the school pastor about father. The school pastor contacted father and asked if he would like to study the Bible. Father agreed, and he and the pastor began to meet to study the Bible. Father was amazed as he learned about Jesus. Amira had told him some things he had, she had learned about Jesus, but now he was reading things he had never known. Did you know this all your life? He asked the pastor. I wish I had known this many years ago. Father began to grow happier and happier. 
he smiled more and more. He and Amira read the Bible together. They went to church on Sabbath together. Soon he and Amira were perhaps the happiest father and daughter in India. But mother wasn't happy. She didn't know Jesus and she didn't want to know Jesus. She belonged to another world religion and she didn't want father and Amira reading the Bible or going to church on Sabbath. Stop going to church, she told the father. Stop reading the Bible. Father didn't know what to do as Amira mother complained. Father's stomach pains grew worse. Adventist friends took him to the hospital, cared for him there. The doctor said father needed an operation. Something amazing happened as father waited for the operation. As he lay in bed, he had a dream that he saw Jesus. Father had never seen such a kind face. It was, be it was so beautiful. One, as, one look at his face filled father with peace and calmness. Do not be afraid, Jesus said. I am with you. In the dream, father also saw the pastor. He understood that the pastor was a good man who was bringing him closer to Jesus. After the operation, father had another dream. This time, he saw Jesus smiling reassuringly at him. After that, father had no more doubt about what to do. He wanted to give Jesus his heart. When mother heard the news, she became very angry. She was so angry that she went to another room to sleep at night. Alone in bed, father couldn't fall asleep. He wondered if he had made the right decision in giving his heart to Jesus. Then he felt like Jesus came into the room. He didn't see Jesus, but it was like Jesus came in and touched him on the shoulder. He felt completely complete peace. Father decided to follow Jesus no matter what. When Amira saw, when, when Amira mother saw that father had made up his mind to follow Jesus, she began to calm down. She remembered the Adventists had helped care for father in the hospital, and she decided that they must be very good people. When the Adventist church offered some free medical care, she went to father, she went, she went with father to the church for the first time. Mother was impressed with the people that she saw at the church. She saw that they were kind and loving. She stopped being angry with Amira and her Amira's father. Today, father is praying for mother to accept Jesus. Amira is also praying for mother to accept Jesus. They want mother to be happy like them. Father is happy that he sent Amira to the Seventh-day Adventist school. Amira is happy that she goes to the school. It changed Amira's life, it changed father's life, and they believe it will change mother's life. They think it is the happiest school ever. Thank you for your Sabbath, uh, thank you for your Sabbath school mission offering today that will help spread the gospel in India and Nepal. Seven of the ten Advent Seven of the 10, 13 um, Sabbath projects involve seven the Adventist schools at the one where Amira studies. Thank you for your generous offering. Amen, Amen church. All right, so at this time, we are going to be collecting our 13 Sabbath offering. And I encourage that you will give generously as this offering will be going to India and Nepal where the schools, the Seventh-day Adventist schools are. So children like Amira can benefit. And so we're going to be singing a boat go sailing to the missions land. But just before, let us pray. Just pause a minute, please. Let us pray. Loving God and our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. This morning as we gathered in this your holy place of worship, we are reminded of our brothers and sisters who are across the waters and are in need of some of our resources. May as we give, may we give generously. May you restore those who don't have to give. And may we give more so our hearts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A boat goes sailing to the mission's land. Sailing, sailing, mission boat. It takes our offerings to the children there. 
sailing missionary boat. Sing with me, church. A boat goes sailing to the mission's land. Sailing, sailing mission land. It takes our offerings to the children there. Sailing missionary boat. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. God is good all the time. Today, I take it a great privilege on behalf of the church to, to invite you. I take it a great privilege on behalf of the pastor and the members of the board to welcome you to today's service. There are many other places you could be, but you have chosen to be here and we are happy that you are here worshiping with us today. I now invite you to stand as we sing, we have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Oh 
please be seated. Yes, we'll continue worship with the use of the hymn 528. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. invite you to stand for the hymn 529 under his wings.
remain standing for the scripture reading. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Hebrews 9, verses 12 to 15. And I will read it in your hearing. I will be reading from the New English Translation. Okay, um, I will be reading from the King James Version. <laughs> Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of ephah sprinkling the unknown sanctified to the pure of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. Purge yourself, conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemption of transgressions that were under the first test testament, they which are called may receive the promise of internal inheritance is the end of God all the world. The reading of God all the world. quietly kneel as we see the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners and we plunge beneath this blood this morning and washed all our guilty stain. Eternal Father Jehovah we come before your holy presence. Indeed we are grateful to be into your house another Sabbath. Father, we glorify you, we worship you, we adore you. There is none like unto you. And so, Lord, we are grateful for this blood that we can come and be cleansed. We can become washed thoroughly within and without. And so, Father, we are grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, Father, whom you have sent and through him we have this opportunity we have this privilege of making it uh, to the kingdom we praise your holy name and our lord as we come together as a congregation father we come with our life of sacrifice we come with our offering we come to partake father god in this holy communion lord taking this emblem re reminding us of your son what he has been through for us lord we pray at this moment that as we come as your children lord 
We pray that it will not be rituals. We pray that it will not be the same whole. But Lord, your, your Holy Spirit will come down and fill us this Sabbath morning as we worship you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will saturate us as we partake of these holy emblems. Father, we come with our families. So many things have been happening today. Our families have been under serious attack. Our children, our youth have been gone astray. And so, Lord, we come seeking you. And so, Lord, we ask that your resurrection power will be upon us and our families. So as we wrestle against our principalities and against wickedness, we will be able to be overcomers. We will be able to dwell. We will be able to abide in your secret place, Lord, hidden from the dark world, Father. We pray that your Holy Spirit will saturate us today that it will not be the same. Loving Lord, we are longing to see you, Lord. We are tired of this world. This world is filled of trouble and trials. And Lord, it's going on time. We are serious with our relationship with you. Lord, let this church congregation be the few in Sardis that has not defiled our garments. We ask of you, Father. We want to be like you, Lord. So you wash us today as we go down into foot washing and partake of these holy emblems may we be a new lord put self aside so that you can use us in a mighty way sweet holy spirit take over this congregation fill your man servant lord with the holy spirit as he deliver your word today lord May we be saturated. Lord, those on the corner line will receive your blessing today, Lord. Our families will be saved. Lord, our youth will return to you like the prodigal son. And we will be in one accord. We will be in unity. And then you will be ready for the church today. Lift up your man's servant, Lord. Has he delivered your word with power and clarity? This I ask of you in no other name, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And any time I don't know Jesus. what Jesus. to do, Jesus. I will cast all my cares Uh, let me invite the church to turn with me to Psalms 96 very quickly. Psalms 96. And um, we will read verses 5 through to 8. I will read in your hearing. It reads, For all the gods of the people or idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. 
strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Let me now invite the deacons to come forward for the collection of the day's tithes and offering. Shall we stand as we ask God's blessing on the tithes and offering? Let us pray. Oh God and our Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, we have come into your sanctuary today to worship you. We have bought our gifts, our tithes and our offering. Whatever our gifts, whatever form our gifts may take, Lord, we ask that you'll bless it today that you will sanctify it for holy use. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will multiply it so that your work may go forward and your coming may be hastened. For we ask in Jesus' name.
Today we are delighted to be ministered to by a, a person who can be considered an international speaker. But the information I now give to you, you will have to help me to determine who he really is. He does go by the name of Pastor Joel Schillingford. He was born in Guadeloupe, raised in Dominica, educated in Jamaica, migrated to Mile Gully, and came up the hill to Mandeville, where he now ministers. His wife is from Dominica, and they came here to minister. By birth, he Guadeloupean, lived in Dominica, but his children are Jamaicans. I heard somebody say that sound mixed up. But we are so happy that uh, Pastor Schillingford and his wife and family, they have decided to make Jamaica their home. So they are working on that part where their children are one upon them. We're very happy that the Lord has placed on his heart the message that will direct our thoughts and lift us up to be with him in heavenly places. As he prepares to come forward, we are inviting from you for him not only your undivided attention but your continuous prayers. The song of meditation will come and thereafter, please help me make welcome to the podium. Pastor Joel Schillingford, our home pastor.
Thank you for this wonderful item of special music. It was sung so solemnly. When this song, when they sang, I was transported to the heavenly realms and understood the, the true meaning of the atonement, the cross, the sacrifice. This is music. Before we move into our message, permit me to give a warm welcome to all our visitors who are here today. We acknowledge that there are a number of visitors in our mix, and we say welcome to our church. We don't have the time for its communion to single out everyone, but our ushers were instructed to give each visitor a copy of a book compliments the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Mandeville. Additionally, we would like you to know that our regular feeding program, our soup program after Divine Hour service will not be had today because of circumstances beyond our control. We do apologize and hope to resume next week. And finally, at 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m., we convene here, all of you, as we affirm our elders, our, the members of the treasury team, and also members of secretariat. They will be affirmed today at 3.30, and we look forward to your support. We look forward to your prayers for them. We begin at 3.30 p.m. The theme for this communion service, first quarter's communion service, is atonement. Today is, this weekend really culminate the Lent season, and the nominal churches call this season Easter, and uh, this season is utilized to com commemorate and to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, what we call the Passion of Christ. Within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we use the communion service to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And I will say to you, while they may celebrate it once per year, we celebrate it every year every communion. The text was already read. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 12 through 14. And permit me to read again with you in your hearing, for it says, now with the blood, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean sacrifices for the purifying of flesh, 14, how much more shall the blood, the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Let us pray. Father, Again, O oh Lord, we pray that you will take us to the cross, that you will give us a true understanding of atonement, that, O oh Lord, when this service, the Lord's Supper, comes to an end today, someone will say, Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for atonement is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the words of our Lord stands forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Atonement. A man bought a vehicle, a 
popular mid-size SUV and drove it for some time in Jamaica. He felt he had a good vehicle. He said, this is so comfortable. I feel like I am flying. But in the process of time, he went for a test drive to Toyota Jamaica. And then he sampled a Prado. Drove around Kingston. And in his mind, he looked back on his mid-size SUV and he said one word. That word is better. Better. Better, Brother Jones. Well, this is the key word in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is summarized by one word, better. And better is indicative of who Jesus is. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9, Jesus is the better salvation. In Hebrews 8 and verse 6, he's the better promise. In Hebrews 7 and verse 22, he's the better covenant. In Hebrews 9 and verse 23, he's the better sacrifice. In Hebrews 12 and verse 24, he's the better blood. In Hebrews 11 and verse 35, he's the better resurrection. In Hebrews 7 and verse 9, he's the better hope. In Hebrews 11 and verse 16, he's the better country. In Hebrews 10 and verse 34, he's the better possession. And in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 to 14, he's the better atonement. Jesus is simply better. He's better than Moses, better than the angels, better than the old covenant, better than the Pentateuch. Jesus is better. But he says Jesus, not only has his sacrifice and the atonement at the cross uh, is better not that it only replaces the old covenant or the sacrificial service, but it is simply better. It says, not with the blood of goats and of calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if by the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead's work of the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant by means of his death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. In the day of atonement, we know that the high priest would enter the veil, what we call the separation from the most holy to the holy, from the, the holy to the most holy. And he would have the blood of the bullock. And he would sprinkle that before the mercy seat for the sins of the people. And then they would release the Azazel into the wilderness to die. In fact, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 that they would also have a red heifer, one that knew no yoke, one that was never pregnant, or one that never milked a calf. And they, this heifer, they would burn it, and they would take the ashes of this heifer, 
and they would sprinkle it on the lava in the outer courts for the purification of the people. And also the man with that ashes, he would be unclean until evening. Listen to me. The atonement in the Old Testament was costly to animals. There were goats and lamb and bullocks and a heifer and so on. And they, the high priest, would go into the most holy place and minister unto the sins for the sins of the people. But Jesus looked down and he said, How long shall my people bear in this? My blood in the place of the blood of the bulls. My blood will be used as the atonement for the lost humanity. And Jesus said, Well, no longer shall the priest go into the hope, the most holy place, to sprinkle seven times the blood. I will offer myself as the eternal sacrifice and the atonement of sin. In Israel today, there is a big war. Gaza versus the IDF. And it is rumored that the Israeli government and the very much fanatical Jews, they have imported three heifers from Texas. Spotless, red, and has never been yoked. And they look at the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock, and they said for Messiah to come, we must burn, sacrifice, and burn one of these heifers on the Dome of the Rock, that spot there. And they say nothing will stop them. War or famine, nothing will stop them because they believe they must sacrifice this heifer on the Dome of the Rock, the place of the Dome of the Rock, so that it could herald the second coming of Jesus Christ. We say to them, this is done away with because there is a better sacrifice in Jesus. We have a better atonement. That atonement in the old covenant, it was incomplete. One author said, it was not the real deal. The Bible said it could not cleanse conscience. But Jesus introduces us to a better sacrifice. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 says, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. If the Son therefore make you free, you are free indeed. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean to me today? What does that mean to you today? What does the atonement mean for you? What are the ramifications of the atonement? Well, let me tell you. Romans chapter 5 says, He who is justified... By faith has peace with God. Because of the atonement, you are no longer at war with God. You are at peace with God because you are justified by the blood of the Lamb. It means that your ransom was paid for by his own blood. It means that The justification of your life has already begun. And it continues with the finished work of Jesus Christ. It tells us that we are free in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we don't appreciate the atonement at the cross. Sometimes we don't appreciate 
what the Lord went through for us to receive this purchase redemption. But let me tell you something. Now that I turn man, and you have children to send to school, and school fee to pay, and all of these expenses, I look back and say, oh my, I'm thankful for my parents. Can you imagine that your blood should have been spilled? You should have been on the cross. But someone says, Loretta Stevenson, you don't have to go to the cross. You can bear the cross. I will bear the cross for you. And Jesus says, Loretta, come down off the cross. I will be hung on that cross for your sins. Let me bear your sins on my body. I will do it for you. And that's the atonement. Jesus paid the price with his own blood for you. That is precious. You are not perfect, but you are redeemed. You are not perfectly behaved, but you are redeemed. The redemption process, God justifies him, cleans him from sin, and continues with the justification process. That word justification is in the Greek perfect tense. The action was done in the past. It continues in the present but it has future ramifications. Jesus continues to be with us and to carry us on the way because our salvation, Jesus is responsible for our salvation. And there are some who say that I don't want to give my heart to Jesus Christ because I am afraid I will backslide. Let me say to you, when you become a Christian, Jesus is responsible for your salvation. You walk hand in hand with him and he leads you onto the path of salvation and righteousness. And as you stay with him, you remain in your justified status in Christ. Christ. Are you with me? Let me say to you, your greatest asset on earth is not what you have in material possession. Your greatest asset you have is your justified status in Christ. Because the creator of the heavens and the earth saw it fit to die for you. Your justified status in Christ is your greatest asset you have today. Paul told Timothy, you came into this life with nothing and surely nothing you shall return with. But we can add something. We return with our justified status that one day the Lord will raise us up from the dead and give us a home with him in glory. Your greatest asset here today is your justified status in Christ. But on the communion service, how are we to celebrate there are many out there with bun and cheese because they are celebrating Easter there are many with golden eggs chocolate golden eggs with car caramel and milk inside you all don't do that for Easter not yet but if you're a Jamaican for Easter celebration you must have bun and cheese The world had their mass on Friday, Good Friday. But how are we to 
truly recognize and celebrate the death of Jesus Christ, the atonement. Paul said to us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, For I received from the Lord, which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he took the cup, and after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. How are we to celebrate the atonement whenever we come before the cross or whenever we come before the Lord's Supper or whenever there is communion service, we are celebrating the atonement at the cross. And that is why it is the highest service in the Seventh-day Adventist Church because we are celebrating that which the Lord has done for us. And when we eat the bread, brethren, we are celebrating his broken body. And when we drink the blood, we are celebrating his spilled blood. And when we commune and when we go to the back or to on the breezeway and we wash each other's feet, the ordinance of humility, we are saying we are all are equal at the foot of the cross. We are saying all here are equal because God died for us. And when we come here and we celebrate, that is why the communion service is the highest. We should be in celebratory mood today because we are happy that our sins were paid for. We are happy that someone paid it all. We are happy that Jesus went to the cross instead of us. We are happy that Jesus Jesus paid it all, brothers and sisters. So Paul said to the church at Corinth, the members were very casual with the service. At the church of Corinth, when it was communion, half of the church members were drunk and the others ate the food that came for the poor. Their minds were not on Calvary. The solemnity and the seriousness of the service was not in their thoughts. And Paul said to them, listen to me, this is an important service here today. As you eat the bread and you drink the wine, you are celebrating the broken body and the spilled blood. That's how we celebrate the passion of Christ. Not through Easter, but through the communion service. Not with bun and cheese, but with the communion service. Not with golden eggs with caramel inside but with the emblems that represent the spilled blood and the broken body of Jesus Christ. Today, prepare your minds as you eat this bread and drink this wine. Thank God that you are redeemed. Thank God your salvation was purchased. Prepare your minds. And if you have ought with anyone here today, make peace with him before you partake. Take the bread with clean conscience. Drink the wine with a pure heart. Eat the bread remembering his broken body that was spilt on Calvary's cross. When you drink the wine, remember his side that was 
and blood gushed out with water. And when they hung him on that cross, there for the elements, and he said the last seven words, and he yielded the ghost. But on the first day, our Lord, our God, raised him up from the grave. Remember the greatest sacrifice for you was that which was done on the cross. Help us, Lord, to recognize it. Help us to celebrate it today. Help us to be thankful that our sins were atoned for. And as we face emblems very soon, help us to celebrate your death and burial and resurrection. Let us stand as we pray. Father, we are thankful for the cross. We don't always perhaps show our appreciation. But Lord, this is the greatest asset we have. Our redemption. Our purchased salvation. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. We magnify your name as we celebrate your broken body and your spilled blood. There is someone here today who wants to be a recipient of this atonement, of this sacrifice. We pray, O oh Lord, that today will be their day of salvation. Father, there are some who have been healed from infirmities at the communion table. We pray today someone will be set free from the bondage of illness, of depression, of anxiety, of poverty, of trouble. Set someone free today at this table. Liberate someone today, O oh Lord. Break these chains even today, O oh Father. And set the captives free is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Very soon we will sing the song of separation. And I encourage you to listen to these instructions before we sing our song of separations. The ladies, all the ladies, will convene in the church hall. And all the men will convene on the breezeway on this side of our church. We have allowed the entire church hall to be for the women so enough space can be there for you. Amen? Amen. And the men will soldier it out on the outside. I thought I would hear a loud amen. After we would have partaken in the ordinance of humility, we will gather deacons, deaconesses, leaders, elders, and pastors in the church hall for final preparation to partake of the emblems. We will now stand and sing our song of separation. Our song of separation, hymn 318, Whiter Than Snow. I invite you to stand. to leave in my 
shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the sky and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I owe, now wash me and I shall be whiter than, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow, now wash me and I shall be whiter than Lord Jesus, for these I must humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. begin separating less whiter than snow now wash me and I will be whiter than snow Lord Jesus thou seest thy patiently way come now and we a new heart create those who have sought thee thou never says no now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow whiter than snow yes whiter than snow now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow whiter than snow yes whiter than snow now wash me and I will be whiter than
to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I prove him more and all, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sea. And self to cease just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him. Jesus, Jesus, precious 
cherish the aura dead crumbs till my troth is at last I lay down. I will cling to the aura dead crumbs and exchange it someday. Favorite, you want me to sing for you? Anyone has a favorite? No, sorry, 109. That's a good one. Marvelous grace. Right, everybody, number 109. Marvelous grace.
another favorite? 516. Did I hear 516? Number 412. Jesus. Number 251.
This is your time to give us your favorite. Five one, five one six. All the way my savior leads me. Number five one six. Thank you, Uncle Liz. Hymn 520. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Let's go, our wonderful.
I want to do a quick little check. I want to know how many gentlemen are in the building. I will know when I hear you guys singing. Okay, ladies, we're just going to allow the gentlemen to sing now. Second verse. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He taketh my burden away. Let's go, gentlemen. Oh, one. Just a gentleman. Numberless. verse with parts, all parts singing.
you now to stand let us stand Ladies and gentlemen, we are now gathered to partake in the emblems. Serving at the head table are members of the Board of Elders and myself. And it is our hope and desire that as you partake, as you participate there, you will understand and get closer to the meaning of Calvary and atonement. We now invite you to stand, or rather remain seated, remain seated as we have the, remain, sorry, remain standing, remain standing, remain standing. We will now the prayer for the bread and the wine by Elder David Hall and the prayer for Elder Vinton Mullins. Keep standing for the reading of the God. Church, the communion text. 
text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Please follow me as I read in your hearing. For as I have received of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink. This is in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do so and show the death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Let us be mindful of the sacrifices of Jesus made for us. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we are humbled we are grateful to be at your table this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for that great sacrifice that you paid on Calvary's cross to redeem lost humanity. We thank you for your spilled blood and your broken body. And as we fall prostrate to God at the foot of the cross, we behold you, lowly Jesus, battered, bruised, rejected by many. But we thank you, O God, that through your blood, we have promised life, eternal life. And O God, as we partake of the Bread and the wine. We pray that we bless it, which is a symbol of your spilled blood. The unleavened bread, a symbol of your broken body. May as we partake, your Holy Spirit will fill our hearts and we leave this place not to deny you like Peter, not to betray you like Judas, not to flee from you like the other disciples, not to crucify you like the Jews, but we'll, be go, we'll go out proclaiming your love and your grace of what you have done for us, what you will continue to do. Bless each and every participant here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We will now sing the song together. Jesus invites his children to the table as we unveil the communion table. Song 409. Hymn 409. Jesus invites is seen.
We'll continue with the use of hymn 302 in the blood from the cross. I have been washed from hymn 302.
hymn 184. Has everyone been served? Has everyone been served? Okay. Let's continue singing. And we are reminding the new converts especially that you only drink when the instructions have been given to drink. So you wait so we can partake together as a church. Ladies, can you start this one? I hear the Savior say. second verse.
before it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength. everyone been served on the balconies in the lower congregation has everyone been served <laughs> all right apart from the deacons and deaconesses and elders and crucify
rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all above all powers
Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, broke bread and said, Eat. This is my broken body, which was given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat with a prayer on our hearts. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink, drink in remembrance of my spilled blood. Let us drink with a prayer on our heart. Amen. Please listen to these instructions. The deacons will now yes. we will now have the prayer for the offering for the needy poor and where the receptacles are concerned the cups we ask you to just send them down to the end of the bench and our deacons will collect them after the end of the midday service amen just send them down and those who would like to use their cups as a souvenir you want to take them home you are offered the opportunity and the privilege also to take your personal cup home as a souvenir to remember this great service we had today. Others of you, you just send it down to the end of the bench and we will pick it up. I'm going to now invite the prayer for the offering for the needy poor. Shall we pray? What a privilege we have to be partakers with God. And we stand subservient to his highest order. We ask now, God, that you will bless all of us. That as we open up our hands and our hearts to give to the less fortunate, that you will bless our gifts. Help, O oh Lord, that we will give it not grudgingly nor sparingly, but give it because we wanted to give it. We pray, therefore, that you will bless the gifts as it goes towards its intended objective. We pray and thank you for answering in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you be free from the there is power in Power in the blood. Mm -hmm. There is wonderful power.
After which we invite our deaconesses to veil the communion table. grateful to God that he afforded us the privilege and the courtesy and the delight to participate in this great service. We are indeed grateful. Before we engage in our recessional, let me thank those who made this communion service a great success. Thanks to our, the members of our diaconate, our deacons and deaconesses, our elders and leaders who came here to practice Thursday night for, for a long time. And um, we want to ensure that it is executed with precision. There are some newbies in our mix. Deacons and deaconesses who were recently ordained in February. And this is their first communion as an ordained deacon or deaconess. And we give God thanks for that. And there is one among us at the head table. It is her first communion ordained as an elder. And she presided so dutifully well. And we give God thanks for her. And we thank our musicians. I believe the music was well set. We thank our media team for moving the cameras around and very taskful assignment to do so and we are grateful for for them and we would like to say thank you to you who made this communion a possibility you are our greatest stakeholder 
and we plan with you in mind. And we are grateful that you came out in your number to participate in the Lord's Supper. I would like to say that remember this afternoon at 3.30, our affirmation service, and also tomorrow, 6 p.m., we begin our grand concert to begin our evangelistic thrust. So from 6 to 7, we will have a prolonged praise and worship. And then at 7, we begin our evangelistic series with Dr. Roy Dennis. We will convene also a baptism tomorrow evening. The water will be troubled. We do ask you to invite a friend. We do invite you to support with your presence, your prayers, and your financial resources as we go into battle tomorrow, 6 p.m. Evangelistic series begin at 7. We look forward to seeing you one and all. I would like us to continue or repeat this song, There is Power, Wonder Working Power. I believe my singing has improved, Brother James. Amen. And the longer I stay here, is the more my singing improves, Sister Cottrell. All right. Amen. Amen. And we remind you of Brother U. Palmer funeral service, 11 a.m. tomorrow. We are hoping for your support. Let us sing this song. sin. There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you make victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power Power, the wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. It's okay to clap. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There is wonderful power in the blood.